Collection of Stuart engines and some other nice things. Part 9. Partially dismantling the Stuart Twin Victoria, starting with the crankshaft, followed by removing the connecting rods, crossheads, front cylinder covers and pistons. Why am I doing this? Have I gone mad? No, there are various problems with this engine that need rectifying. It's actually difficult to go mad because I've been there for many years. The first sign of madness was when I became a musician. But anyway, on with the job. This is the current crankshaft that's fitted to the Victoria, and it doesn't fit very well. And I really don't know why this is. There's a bit of a puzzle going on here. In actual fact, quite a lot of this engine is going to need to be dismantled. But rather than completely dismantle the engine, I'll do it in stages. I need to find out why the crankshaft is too short. When I fit the crank webs, which by the way are both different sizes, they do not fit properly on the crankshaft. The ends of the crankshaft are turned down to fit the crank webs. And in this clip you can see the larger diameter part of the crankshaft lined up with the bearing. But when I line up the crankshaft in the bearing at the right hand side, at the left hand side it's a little bit inboard of the bearing. And what makes matters worse is the holes in the crankshaft are not in the right place. If I fit a crank web in position, there's a gap between the crank web and the larger part of the crankshaft that goes through the bearing. Somehow, I don't think this is the problem of the pre machine kit. The problems are very similar between the Stuart Models pre machine kit of the Grasshopper Beam and this pre machine kit of a Stuart Models Twin Victoria. I'm not happy with this situation, the crankshaft is a bit of a mess and I'm going to make a new one. What I am happy with though, is the general condition of the machine parts are excellent. And the machined eccentric sheaves and matching straps are really machined well. The part that sticks up in the middle that locates the eccentric strap is very small, which leaves a really good bearing surface area for the eccentric strap on the sheave. This is one half of the four parts of the machine crosshead. And all four of these are very professionally machined. The next thing to look at are the crosshead guides, and these are good too. They may need adjustment, but I won't be doing this until I've actually run the engine to bed it in. I know it's run before, but once I take it apart and put it back together, I will need to rerun it in, so to speak. Here are the connecting rods, and I'm not happy with these at all. These are made from steel, and the pin that goes through them, that in turn goes through the crosshead blocks, is also made of steel. And steel against steel is never a good idea from a wear point of view, so I may make a modification to these and fit some phosphor bronze bushes. You can see in this clip that the other end of the connecting rods are both bushed with phosphor bronze. I'm going to clean them up slightly as one of them is slightly damaged and there's evidence of burring where the bush was pressed into position. Time now to find out why the pistons are sticking in the cylinders. The engine runs OK but it makes a bit of a tapping sound and if you leave it for a while, when you run it again, the pistons feel quite sticky inside the cylinder. These engines have never been run on steam, I actually got a compressor as part of the collection. So the problem could be that the type of oil used to lubricate them whilst running has made the piston rings swell. The fixing studs on the cylinder cover at this side of the engine are fine, very very neat indeed. With all the studs and screws out of the way, I removed the cylinder cover. And as you can see there's quite a lot of black oil in here which is common when something isn't fully run in, or is tight. By pushing the piston rod, the piston popped out of the cylinder. Here I'm refitting it the other way round, and as you can see, the piston itself is not a tight fit in the cylinder, which is the way it's meant to be when you use O-rings. As I try and refit the piston, this O-ring is very, very tight. I think this is possibly a Viton O-ring, which is a harder substance than silicone rubber. And this one is far too tight in the bore. I think it's time to remove this piston ring, 
take it off the piston and have a close look at it. Here is a comparison. On the right hand side is the cast iron piston from the Stuart Victoria that I'm building myself. And that fits perfectly into the cylinder. And it also fits into the cast iron cylinder that I machined for the single Victoria. You can watch this series on Patreon. It is not available for viewing in its entirety on the public part of YouTube. And this How to Build a Model Steam Engine series is almost complete. I just have to make and fit some of the fiddlier bits. Back now to this much shorter series. Complete with a health and safety warning. Initially I tried to remove the piston ring using the tip of a Stanley knife blade, which is very dangerous, don't do this at home. And this was not successful, so I used the point of a very small screwdriver and promptly stuck it in my thumb. And once the bleeding stopped, I actually did remove the piston ring. And as you can see, the piston fit in the cylinder is OK, everything lines up. And outside now, the birds are singing and the sun is shining. Progress has been made. Whoever put this engine together got a little bit confused with which stud fits where. And with the exception of the stud at the top left, all of the others are the wrong ones. You can see this clearly in the final image of this episode, where some of the studs on top of the steam chest are far too long, and others are OK. On this side, I just chopped off the piston ring, and as I unwind it from the piston, you can see that it's too large a diameter, and it's too wide. I really do think it may be down to swelling because of the type of oil being used. Some oils do contain additives that attack certain types of rubber. A quick check with a really good scientific instrument tells me that the left hand cylinder is good and also the right hand cylinder is good, very smooth indeed. As I gave the cylinders a wipe with a piece of kitchen roll I noticed that there was some very gummy oil at the end of each of them. I used some scotch Bright to remove this. When recommissioning steam engines, gummy oil is a big problem. I've just sold my 5 inch gauge OS Stevenson's rocket, and when I first got that, it wouldn't turn over at all. I had to dismantle one of the cylinders to just de gum the piston that was stuck fast. Now these cylinders are nice and clean. For this engine and the Grasshopper Beam engine, I needed some lubricators, so I put in an order to Stuart Models, and they arrived last week. With value-added tax and delivery, these are not cheap. They had a very good product, and I don't mind them being reassuringly expensive. And Andy at Stuart Models apologised because these weren't polished. And I was pleased about that because I don't want them polished. It looks perfectly fine as it is. I will need to fit a cross-style union, but that's not a big job, and the piping has to come off anyway because it leaks badly. And that's about it for this episode. Here you see the current state of the engine, partially dismantled. In the next episode, I'm going to fit some 1 inch outside diameter steam grade silicone o rings. And I will also be making a new crankshaft. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.